Most of you get, got richer somehow, right? After coming back from semester break. No, maybe I should be asking, not getting richer, getting lighter. We should be we should be talking about how how much extra calories you have managed to make since last week. To be for this. <clears throat> so um, just just before we start, I'll be using this. Okay. Okay, let's shout. Okay. All right. Um, all good. Can hear all the way to the back. Good. Okay. Um, so I hope you you know by now. This is the combination, the merging of two classes. So we have crop physiology, um, AGR. I, I forgot the code. What's the code? Yeah, yeah, that, that, should, that sounds right. And the other postgraduate class, what's the name of your class? Advanced plan breeding. Okay, right. Um, so waiting for that. Your lecturer is three coming? No, no idea. <coughs> How many of you in the class? Six. <coughs> Local, international, combination? Combination. Okay. Two foreigners and four All right, okay. So um, I will still, any of your friends coming? How many of you? Just one, two? Three. What happened to the other three? Coming? Not coming? I should have asked your lecturer your course synopsis, actually, so that I can create this um, somewhat to infuse in your existing lessons. Yeah, but not to worry, not to worry. <clears throat> What happened to the crop physiology group? You know, none of you should be late because by right you should start at 8 today. <clears throat> I think this is my first slides that look so worthy. Um, because we have undergrad in here, much of this you have not seen before, I think. Right, um, so it should be a bit advanced. But um, not to worry, I keep saying this, right? Just because you don't get to go to Oxford or Cambridge or Harvard doesn't mean that the quality of the lesson cannot come to you. If you go to those universities, this is the kind of thing they're going to bombard on your head. Looks lovely, right? Call your friends, come quick. You know, my mental calculation is still okay because I didn't eat so much lemang. Marks are being deducted starting from nine. What time is it? Oh, it's nine already. <clears throat> okay, anyway. Um, so today we have this um, special lecture I would call, all right? Originally, it is not in my group um, syllabus, but since I need to create a case study anyway, so I'll use this for your case study, meaning that you are learning about an important phenomenon, which is a biotic stress on the plants. Okay, if you look at your, your syllabus, your original syllabus, this is not present. This is actually, you start to learn about this in advanced physio and also other courses uh, in the 5000 series. Is this 5000 series? 
for the postgrad? Yes. Okay. All right. <coughs> should I make a start or should I wait? Start, right. right. Why why wait, All right? No, the, the thing is I I don't like one thing. When when I have started, then a river of people start coming in. You know, if those are fishes, we can just spear them one by one. But they're not. So what should, what should I be doing? Yeah. Then you start to see some of your friends start making faces. You know, some people, they don't like to see movement when they are learning because that is high distraction. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, anyway, not to worry. I think we can make a start. Ah, uh, lecture the corporate time. I think we should um, shut this. Let me. What's the light switch? Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure this is not light switch. Good. Can you see? Ooh. I found that picture last night. It's from a paper. Okay. So now we are learning about plant responses to abiotic stresses. The thing that you need to understand now is, even though we are in the faculty of agriculture, we are mainly dealing with crops. But it's good to have the context in a broader overview, plant. That's why I use the word plant. Okay? I hope by now you, uh, you know the difference between plant and crop. What's the difference? Maybe I should ask one simple question. Is all plants crops? No. Is all crops plants? Yes. And then you understand. Okay. Then about the abiotic stress. The word abiotic itself, it means it's the combination of two terminologies. A means not presence and also the bio. Meaning it's a non-living factor. And then these factors contributing to stresses to your crops to your plants okay so with this you need to bear in mind along your journey while learning this that these factors are not necessarily a problem even though the title the connotation given at the beginning looks negative that looks negative right All right it's negative at the specific time, location, and maybe the concentration of the factors. But without the factors, it is not life. Okay? So you, you'll see what I mean in a bit. <clears throat> okay. So that is the official definition of the abiotic stress, which is the the negative impact of non-living factors. You see the words, it's non-living. Anybody got spears? I can start spearing now. <clears throat> what, what group are you from? Those who just came in, what group are you from? What is your group? What? Your physio group. Are you physiology? Crop physiology? Yes. What is your group? The name of your group? Okay, uh, minus three. No, this sh You should come here by eight. Suka kan? Saya tengok aku terjerit-jerit. Okay, so... These are non-living factors on the living organisms, okay? So, what are these factors? So, there is a list there, starting from the drought all the way to the unfavorable edific conditions. Edific means soil, okay? <clears throat> um, have you learned your soil science? No? Why not? You, I think in your soil sign, you're going to see this word, pedology. Pedology. 
So this is the study of soil in natural environment. In its natural environment. This is the study of soil as well, but soil effects on organism. And both of these still under the soil science. Okay, so that's what edaphic means. Um, conditions such as um, pH, you know, compaction of the soil, soil structure, um, CEC, uh, cation exchange capacity, and so on. Looking at this list, one thing should come to your mind. Before these things on the list become problem, they are actually the requirement of a plant. For the plants, it's a requirement. Let's take um, water. What, what are the requirements of the plants? There is a, a, a simple formula to remember this. Plants requirement. Plants requirement to grow he happily and healthily. Nutrient, growing, medium. Okay, so all of these are the requirement of the plants and they are necessity when they are present in the right amount. But we take water. Why plants need water? For what? Why? Why plants need water? For hydration. For hydration. Okay, that's true. Otherwise, the plants will start to wilting. Uh, photosynthesis requires water because that's the vital ingredient. Remember, you always hear that oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis. Why do you think? Where do you think the the oxygen came from? It's from the water itself. The splitting of water during the step of photosynthesis called photolysis split the water gives off it as oxygen byproduct that we inhale for our own uh, good right so water um, in the right amount is needed but what happens when it's too much to the point you get flood what will happen is it beneficial now why not the plants need the water. Too much of a good thing. This is the concept. Too much of a good thing, the plants cannot handle it. Do you eat? What do you eat? Rice. Yeah. How much rice do you eat every time, every single meal? Two. Two, two, two what? Two, two bad. <laughs> So you eat a plate of rice, but what if your grandma is a rice producer? No need la, two or one plate of rice. I give you hundred plates. Eat free. Our family so rich. Got this rice from ancestor seven ago. Will that rice make you live or what? Why that? It's too much. It's too much. We cannot handle it. So it's, this is the concept of the stress. It all started with the factors that are actually beneficial for the living things. But when the concentration, when the rate, when the amount given beyond what is needed or under what is needed, insufficiency, that becomes the stress of the plants. Okay? And this definition applied equally correct to other living organisms, not only plants, okay? For you, humans, insects, bacteria, and so on, okay? So there are many, drought, strong winds, extreme temperature, flood, natural disaster, tornadoes. Do you have tornadoes in Malaysia? Really? I, I, I thought, okay, so on the news, uh, like a week or so ago, somebody lost the roof of the house. If that is not a tornado, then what? Do you know what tornado is? What? 
Okay, so what left? What about volcanoes? Do you have volcanoes in Malaysia? Oh, no. Are you sure? Are you sure? Don't you get volcano every time you come in late? <laughs> right. Okay, and then you got nutrient deficiency, toxicity, and also the edific conditions, unfavorable edific conditions. So, so this is not an exhaustive list. Remember that there are many more stress factors that can happen to the plant, which never a problem before. Okay, so only sky is the limit. It can be a problem. All right, your beloved friend, good one semester, good two semester, good three uh, third semester. Why you're so ugly? I hate you now. That's a problem. Oh, we, well, we thought you like your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's before uh, she got four flat all the semesters. No, she is the problem. Right. Okay. <sighs> okay. So another important concept to, 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 to bear in mind is in addition to all this non exhaustive list of stress factor the stress that can happen to the plant can happen in all directions possible to the plant um i should be using this so look at this one it has got the underground portion of the plant and also the above ground portion of the plant each of these are living parts of the plants. Therefore, it is a possible entrance for the plants to experience stress. And sometimes it can be both. The stresses are happening in both levels. Okay, So we take example here. Um, the plants, what plant is this? What plant is this? I think that's actually a type of bean. Okay. If if you look at here, why 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 I um, highlight this, the other side of this plant. These are biotic factors. Okay. So this is not the scope of the lesson that you are having today. Biotic components in in in, in the world can also be a stress, just like your four flat friend, friend just now. Okay, so that can be your biotic stress factor. Anything living, when they are non-beneficial to the living things, now they are becoming the biotic stress or biotic factors. Okay. Um, you know Vitagen? You know Vitagen? What's, it, what, what, what's so good about Vitagen? What's in it? <laughs> I could see that some of you are trying to make in the hand. <laughs> but not sure which finger to put in first. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the beneficial uh, bacteria. You know, some, some bacteria are friendly bacteria. Some are not so friendly, like your neighbor. So the, 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 the domination of friendly bacteria is actually very, very good of your health. Okay. Put, put it in this perspective, okay? How many cells are in your body for a given human body? Do you know? How many? More or less? Give, give me a, a rough number. 1,000? Number of cells. That's about 60 trillion. 60 trillion cells. All cells. Your hair cells, your red blood cells, your bone cells, your liver cells, everything. Okay. However, we, we talk about your gut now, you know, your intestine now, the one that looks like this. You've got the microbes, right? Collectively, this, this microbe can simply be 60 trillion times 10. So the question now is, are you really you if the DNA that defines you? If the DNA defines you, your 
your yourself as an individual, then you are not you because the number of DNA of the bacteria in your gut more than the number of your cells that you are having. Your genome. So maybe you're not you. Okay? So something for you to wonder. Am I, am I me? Uh, no one no one no wonder auntie got bipolar disorder. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright, coming back to here. So um so those are the biotic stress that we're not focusing. Look at the root, look at the shoot area. Anything can happen. And they can happen in tandem. They can happen in combination. So you can only imagine how busy the plant gets every day. Plants are what we call as sessile. You know sessile? What's, what, what's the synonym for sessile? Immobile. Not you mobile, immobile. What does it mean? They cannot move, pretty much cannot move. You've got your rambutan tree out there, it stays there from, from the moment you planted it until, well, until, until it's no longer needed there, okay? So all of these stresses, when they come in contact with the plants or they are part of the plant problems now, the plants need to deal it. They cannot run away like you. So imagine how complex the physiology of plants because they need to deal with this every single second of the day. Just because it's night doesn't mean that the stresses factors are not present. Okay? All right? So again, it puts perspective to you how you can, because in agriculture and horticulture, it's all about producing to the maximum harvest, right? So when you understand this concept, this is actually beneficial because you now can lessen the stress that your plants are experiencing. You know, a small effort done can actually make a big impact to the harvest without changing any fertilization scheme, watering scheme, you know, as simple as that, right? Okay, so let's look at the, um, what will happen after all the stresses have come in contact with the plant. So the plants, living thing, we all know, living things, they will start to respond. Are you going to respond to stress factors? Sure. Put your hand like this. Go to your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have not finished. No, you go to neighbor, your neighbor like this. <laughs> you judge people too quickly. <laughs> So now we are talking about the response time frame of the plants. Now that the stress factors are unavoidable, how, how, how they are going to deal with this in a short time frame? You know, some stress, they cannot pretty much ignore about it. Some stress, they cannot ignore. Okay. So here comes the concept of rapid changes or sorry, rapid responses and also the slow responses. Depending on the books that you are referring, if you are learning deeper about this, um, this, this concept is actually cannot be generalized because let's face it, there are about 400,000 plant species on our planet. Each plant species, they live in different environmental setting. Some live in the tropical jungle, some live uh, in the desert, some live in the office building, some live on your table that you never look at after six months. So they are going to respond differently. And sometimes the strategy that they respond to the stress is only specific for that species only. Okay, so what are the responses? So we're talking about now the rapid responses. 
let's say that the plant, you have your plant here, this is your plant, and your plant now is experiencing drought. You know drought? Um, suddenly, there is no water. Okay? There's a shortage of water. So what usually will happen? So you will see a list of things will happen physiologically and biochemically. Okay? Metabolic fluxes, membrane fluidity, you know, protein, and so on. Okay? So on that you are thinking, oh, I'm so doomed with this subject. Then there is another set of response. The plant takes a bit longer to create a reaction. We call that the slow response. And this usually um, involving communication with other parts of the plant so that the plants can undergo what we call as uh, adaptation, okay? So there is a two terminologies, um, acclimation and adaptation. So usually acclimation is something like for the short term, like suddenly you are giving the highlight to the plant or it's experiencing a short bout of water insufficiency, you know, but for adaptation, when the problem, when the stresses is persistent, you know, it happened this week, then it happens the next week, and so on. So the plants need to commit to memory this problem so that it is um, very much prepared to what is coming. <clears throat> I remember this, uh, this, this incident um, a long time ago when, when I did my, 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 my internship a long, long time ago. In 2010, in 2010, this is not in Malaysia, of course, because it, it was snowing. Um, there, there was, uh, no, no, not in 2010, 20, 2009. Where were you, 2009? <laughs> so in my, in my workplace, there was a sudden um, blizzard. In London, if you got blizzard, that's like a doomsday, okay? It, it, it's, you know, London don't really get snow. If it gets snow, that's, that's something very people, uh, something, something problematic going to, to, to happen very soon. So there is a strong winter that to, in the year of 2009. To the point, all the conifer trees, you know conifer trees? They break because the snow is just too heavy. Okay, and it gets so cold, minus 15. Your freezer, the one that you put your curry pup in, frozen donut and stuff, that's minus 20. Imagine in London, minus 15. Yeah, yeah. So all these plants, they are struggling to go through with the winter because it, it, it's, it's, it's just um, overwhelming for the plants to handle. So the next year, in 2010, we noticed that suddenly these conifer, which usually taking their own sweet time to grow, to produce cones. Remember, okay, conifer, gymnosperm, they do not have fruits like durian. They produce reproductive structure in the form of cones. We noticed that for the coming year, the cones suddenly increased like 10 times more, even though it's not snowing. So that, that, that makes a lot of scientists were thinking that time that the plants actually have the memory even though it's already one year. They remember the distraught that they experienced the year before. And they're kind of afraid, oh, you know what? If, if, if this year we got another minus 20 coldness and snow, we are toasted. So let's make new, more babies. So we got ended up with tons and tons of cones. So that's a form of slow response. But for that to happen, a threshold point must be reached. If the blizzard, the strong winter only happened for like two, three days, that's not enough to scare the conifers. They'll, they just, you know, like, ah, this, this, this is fine. We, we can handle this. But when it happens for like three months, that's definitely over the limit of the plants. Okay? But the good thing is, 
Conifer is an ancient plant. Did you know that? Conifer is an ancient plant. The plants that you see now, all the durian, the rambutan, these are domesticated plants. Okay, conifer, you don't hear people hybridize conifer, domesticated conifer, because they are pretty much ancient. The proof is most of the biggest trees on the world and also the oldest tree in the world, such as the bristle cone pine, you know, sequoia tree, these are all gymnosperm, the conifer family. Very tall. What's the, 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 the tallest tree on the world? In the world, what's the tallest tree? It's got a name to it, actually. You can look it up later, okay? Hyperion. So it's about... 120 meters. How tall is 120 meters? Mm -hmm. 120 divided by 3. How many? 40. 40 floors. It's very tall. <coughs> and that's another one. Bristle cone pine. Bristle cone pine. This is actually a uh, sequoia, okay? Sequoia. Sequoia is a type of pine as well. This is actually 4,500 years. 4,500 years. Very, very old. So can you imagine, if they do not have this kind of response, they know how to deal with the situation, can they live for 4,500 years? 4,500 years, meaning that they were, these plants were a sapling, seedlings when pharaohs was busy building pyramids. Pyramid was about that, that, that age as well, okay? So the pyramid is still here, the plant is still here, where's the pharaoh? Is, is pharaoh still around? Is it still around or is, is it st is not around anymore? Is it around or not, pharaoh? Do you know who pharaoh is? No? Pharaoh, pharaoh. 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 Pharaoh is the English version of it. Um, if you if if you're Christian, you you learn about the Moses, right? So of course you should know about the uh, Pharaoh. No. Uh, the reason we use a pharaoh as, as one of the mark in the time frame because the pyramid um, historian can be certain about the age because they do the carbon radiocarbon dating from the stone, the granite stone of the pyramid and also they, they interpret the hieroglyph writing on the wall so that's, that's how they know the age so during that time, it's a wonder this bristle compound can undergo all these stresses, right? Can, can you imagine living that long? Can you imagine living that long? 4,500 years. What happened to you? I, I always say this, you know, if you manage to get to 80, 70 years old, that's good enough, right? Because if you reach 90 and 100s, you're already walking like a lizard. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's look at what happened upon the contact with stress. So I've got two, two examples here. So I will use number one, stomatal response. And number two is the uh, autophagy. autophagy. There are many responses that can happen in, in the plant, okay? You can see, there are many responses here. So I'll take, I'll take two. One to represent rapid, one to represent the slow response, okay? So for the rapid example, is the stomata movement. You know stomata? What are they? So stomata are actually microscopic pores on the surface of the leaf. It's from the Greek word, actually. Toma. It means mouth. Mouth. Stoma, this is singular. Plural is tomata. 
So, stoma or stomata is actually a pairing of gut cells. It's not a single cell, okay? So, the pairing of two gut cells, this is a gut cell, okay? Create one stoma. This side of the, you, you can see that the, the, the shape of the gut cell is actually not um, even. It looks, it looks somewhat um, elongated that way. Okay? And if you study the cell wall thickness of the cell uh, of the gut cell, you will find that some region of the cell wall is actually more thickened than the other region. So when this happens, as the water comes in and out of the cell, it will cause the cell to form aperture. Okay, see the hole here? This is called aperture. And why this aperture can be formed? Because uneven thickening of cell wall of gut cell. Okay, so how can you cause the cell wall, oh sorry, or the gut cells to open and close? The stomata to open and close. There are many things. Okay, so on this side, what triggers stomatal opening? On this side, what triggers stomatal closing? So the things that trigger stomatal openings are things like the blue light, okay, um, polarization. You can you can see um, all of these various processes. You don't have to worry about this. Um, I'm just I'm just telling that each events, life events that happen will trigger stomata to open and close many, many times for a given seconds. They are like mouth, you know, your friends cannot stop from talking. Like crazy chicken. Right. Okay. And even more for the stomata closing. This is what I want you to focus on because upon the stress, stomata will close. For example, drought. For example, high temperature. How can the stomata close? So you can see that all of these are interconnected. Can you see all the question mark here? Scientists still have not figured out what of these mechanisms are. Okay, so that well, that's an opportunity for you to, to, to describe. So you can see that, I'll take one, ABA. ABA is the plant hormone, abscisic acid. When the plant is un, um, undergoing water stress, the, A, the ABA level will go up. This high ABA will get into the gut cell and cause a cascade of reaction. This is not direct, okay? This is all the cascade reaction. It's cascade reaction, or we call it signal transduction. Meaning that one thing happened, the next step will happen, like a domino effect. Along the way, this gets in, this will be activated, this activated, this will cause this thing to wake up, this thing wake up, this thing will poke this. Oh, okay. close. Okay, so it's a very complex um, process. Okay. So why, why, this, why this is important? The stomatal opening and stomatal closing. It has impact on stomatal conductance. Stomatal conductance means the passage of gas in and out of the stomata, which is very important because, because what? Why gas exchange is important to be regulated by stomata? Because the plus needs to let CO2 in. If carbon dioxide is not entering the cell, how photosynthesis is going to take place? If water vapor and oxygen cannot leave the leaf, how the plant is going to do transpiration, cooling down itself? How are we going to acquire the oxygen for us to breathe? So stomata is very important. It's, it's, it's like this, these magical portals that needs to decide every single second, should I open a lot, should I close? 
Okay, so this measure the rate of passage of gas, water in the form of gas here, not liquid, water vapor. We call it stomatal conductance. Okay, we take one one example here. One of the uh, a biotic stress, ozone. Okay, A here, ozone. So you can see that um, the golden peak that you see on this chart here, this is actually the burst of ozone given to the plant. You can see that as you give the burst of ozone, the stomata conductance go down. Stomata conductance go down indicates stomata are actually closing. They close. But with the progression of time, when more pulses is given, stomata are not closing anymore. This is the response I was talking about. The plant is acclimating. Okay, do you know what's that? What's that? Diagonal bobbing, I call it. Do you know what's that? No. Uh, be honest like that. Yeah. Your 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 girlfriend asks you, you got money? No. You want money? Yes. Easy. Ozone. So um actually it's a form of oxygen. Form of oxygen. The other name for ozone, ozone is actually trioxygen. Okay? O3. Usually oxygen in the air, what is the form? O2, dioxygen. This oxygen is already an oxidant. Oxidant. Meaning that when they are in contact with a surface, it has the tendency to steal electron, oxidizing the, the material that they are in contact with. Think of apple. When you cut the apple, what will happen to the, the flesh of the apple? Yeah, oxidation. How do you know oxidation has happened? The apple turns rusty. Right. So that's the sign of oxidation. So rust is actually oxidized iron. O3, the effect of oxidant is even more because this tree here is super unstable. It, it, it's, it's hungry for electrons. Okay? So when you give to the plants, plants do not like this. Okay? But they can deal with it. Okay? Even you, even if the ozone gets into you, and not just ozone actually, any form of oxidant, when they get into you, our body can deal with it with the help of antioxidant. Can you give me any example of antioxidant in our diet? Vitamin C, that's good. Vitamin C, um, uh, actually some uh, minerals are also antioxidant. Zinc, selenium, okay? These are all good uh, vitamin uh, and minerals. Uh, we call it the ACE vitamin. Uh, plus zinc, plus selenium. So if you have never-ending acne, even though you are 25 years old now, you should be eating that. These, these are actually a scientifically proven remedy to control your adult acne. Um, because antioxidants do so much in your body every day, okay? Right, so coming back to here. So, what if the ozone is, is given in the time far apart? Not in a regular pulses, but at a much wider gap of pulse. You can see that the plant, for the second burst of ozone, the conductance, the stomata are not closing as much compared to the first time. The plant now is having a memory. It's anticipating problem. So this is a sign of acclimation and eventually adaptation. Okay, All right. So ozone is not a problem that the plant has to face. There are many other abiotic stress. Low humidity. And also the ABA. ABA is, is actually the, the resulting uh, things that happen after the plants have experienced the stress. So we can have a look here. Um, so stomatal conductors, 
this dotted line here with the low humidity. Pay attention to this low humidity. So with the progression of time, the low humidity will cause the stomata conductance to go down. Why suddenly it increased? Can anybody tell why with the low humidity, suddenly the stomata conductance suddenly increased? Shouldn't they just close it straight away? Why? Why? <clears throat> you see, for a given leaf, you have stomata all over the leaf. Not all of these stomata are opening and closing at the same time. Okay? They have a phenomenon, they call it patchy stomata. Patchy stomata. Okay? So patchy stomata means that some are closing while some can actually do other things, okay? So probably for this particular leaf, when the low humidity stress is being given, the plants are actually arranging the stomata to prep for that high humidity, okay? So they need to suddenly open to let all this oxygen out first. Because they, this is, you know, plants, when they have lots of oxygen inside uh, the, the cell, what will happen to the plant? There is a phenomenon called photorespiration. Photorespiration is actually not good to the plant, metabolically speaking. Okay? So it suddenly opened this stomata to let all these gases to go out, and then it closed. So whatever that it contains is actually just enough for it to survive this short period of low humidity. If it didn't let all this oxygen to go out, it's actually going to cost a lot in terms of ATP usage, which the plant is going to regret later. So the plants, even though they do not have the brain like you, they can decide quite quickly. Yeah, I'm very sure if I give assignment, give instruction to the plants, they will just listen to me. Like you can call out the gale, the pull. All right. All right. Okay. So what actually happens in terms of all this molecular level, at the cellular level? What actually happened? So number one, when you give ozone or low humidity, plants will start to create signaling molecules. There are two signaling molecules important in plant signaling, which is ROS, what's that? ROS is reactive oxygen species. Can you give me one example? Have you, have you heard this before? It is oxygen, but oxygen which are super hungry for electron. Okay, so there are, there are many uh, super super oxide, super oxide. You have oxygen molecule, but you have the minus charge. There is a, a high not hydroxide. I forgot the name. H two O two peroxide. Peroxide, then um, hydroxyl, no, 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 OH, H, O, yeah, and then alpha oxygen. There, there are many more, okay? So these are all um, oxidants, okay? All of these are oxidants. Oxidants mean that they are lacking electrons. They are not stable. Remember when you learn about the electrons configuration, it needs to achieve the duplet or octet configuration, 2 or 8. So when this is not being fulfilled, it will start to steal electrons from other surrounding molecules. 
So that's that's actually the mechanism of oxidant. And when they have stolen one electron, that molecule now become an oxidant. So it's like a cascade reaction. You are already sinful. You touch your friend. Now he is sinful as well. Now he need to touch somebody else. Now the whole the whole village is sinful village. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, zombie. That's a good example. You know, yeah. You already a zombie. Then you bite your auntie. Your auntie bite your uncle. Then your uncle bite your grandma. Then the whole family becomes zombie. Very very fast infection. Okay. So these are the molecule that the plant use to signal the rest of the body that stress is has been detected. Act accordingly. Okay. So. Look at all this. Oh, what are these things? These are actually specific proteins involved in the opening and closing ostomata. For example, uh, OST is uh, opening stomatal gene one. I can give you the uh, gut cell, um, it's not hydroxide, what's that? Peroxide. <coughs> Gut cell hydro, hydro, hypoxide resistant gene 1. There are so many names. How many genes are there in plants? So many. Actually, can every, every minute or so, new gene is discovered. So it's almost impossible to know the name of all of these genes. Okay? Yeah. So you can, you can see that all this interaction with the genes, with the messenger being ROS or ABA, will cause each of them to get activated or inhibited. One thing led to another, eventually the stomata will close. So you can see that from the time of stress being detected and to the point of stomata closure, how many minutes has lapsed? Zero? Five. Okay. So that actually regarded as rather quick because plants not only have one stomata. How many stomata for a given leaf? The size of stomata, I'll tell you. The size of stomata is about 20 micrometer in length. One stomata. Your leaf, let's say that your leaf is 10 cm. How many can you fit? So to give you a perspective, right? So the fact that the plants can manage of this million and billion ostomata in under five minutes, that's impressive. Can you, can you control any parts of your body as you wish this way? You, you, you can even control your hand. You know that you're already accessing calorie, but you're still reaching for the, for the quiz and break. Stop. Fail to control. Fail to control. Okay. And, and another thing about the stomata is, um, it is also the point of entry that is not only meant for one part of the plant. It will tell the other part of the plant problem is happening. Meaning that the sensors has sensed stresses have happened in one side of the plant. After, after a cascade of reaction, the signals will be sent using the vascular system or like the veins of the plant to the other parts of the plant so that the other stomata can close as well. Okay? And of course, the plants need to... Sorry, you cannot see the one about that. Um, I, I think there should be something above that. Temperature, pathogen should be one of them. Is it right? Oh, uh, oh. I think, it, sorry, maybe the PDF. PDF is not good. Um, temperature, pathogen, I forgot the other one. What is, what is that? Let's see. Light. 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 Light is also a stress to the plant. Temperature is also the stress of the plant. And then we are not even talking about the biotic stress of the plant. So you see, there is a 
triangle or polygons of decision. I call it polygon of decision. The plants need to balance. Signals have been received. Stomata need to close. But if stomata is closed, how CO2 is going to get into me so that I can do photosynthesis? You see the, the dilemma the plant is? So how do plants decide this? So, so, so many plants are very smart actually. They detected problem, high light here, high temperature here, and then biting, biting of um, pest over here. So they can make a quick decision through the communication and everything to close the stomata here, but to open here. So that this side can still photosynthesize as usual because biting, ah, that's fine, will create a poison to kill you later. So photosynthesis can still happen on the parts of the plants that are not experiencing all these biotic or abiotic stresses. Okay? Like you, if you are heartbroken, heart suddenly the whole body cannot function. It's called heartbroken. What's wrong with your hand? Do the assignment. Right. The, the, do you work like that? If, if, if a stress happened to you, do you completely shut or some of your organs can still function? Oh, it's all right. Uh, half of the body heartbreak, half of the body happy, happy. Does it work like that? So it's amazing how plants can manage all of this. Right. So the next time you see plants, you see how busy it is. It, it needs to make a lot of decision. You, you heartbreak already um, embed your face into the pillow deeper and deeper. And then get you more, and then your all your friend need to understand. Uh, uh, the 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 um the one that love harder does the guilty part. Okay, all right. And the the other example, the final example is the autophagy. I can actually I can pick um and uh many other examples of response. I purposely pick this because. For some reason, our, our faculty never learned about autophagy. But it is very important. Um, and it's gaining more and more attention in the medical community. And autophagy also happens in plant. Autophagy, what is it? Have you heard that word before? Autophagy. Auto means self. Phagy means devouring or eating. Devouring or eating. Meaning that the cell that is undergoing autophagy is actually devouring itself. Makan diri sendiri. Eating itself. Why? If it's eating itself, doesn't mean that it's dead. No. It's actually rearranging the components in the body internally. Okay. So you have your all this abiotic or biotic stressors, the plants can decide to do two things now. It can either deal with it and then go down the autophagy road or just accept the stress as the way it is and then hasten the senescence. And then yeah, browning, that's it. I don't want to do Apoptosis is programmed cell death. Programmed cell death, even without signaling, it will happen. Meaning that time scale alone is enough to cause it to happen. For example, fetus development. When you have baby, our baby actually start with the webbed finger. But when it reaches the age of four months or so, I think three. Apoptosis, meaning that the tissue in between the digits will start to die. That's why you get the gaps in between finger. Yeah. Yes, you were actually you were born first as a duck. <laughs> then with the mercy of God and everything, uh, apoptosis, please. Uh, 
Uh, then you got your beautiful fingers. That's one. You know, dot, dot, web, the web feet of dot, right? That's just pretty much it. Okay? So, so for the baby, without the signaling or not, because this is embedded in the genetic of it, it is pre-programmed. That's why apoptosis, if you're not familiar with apoptosis, uh, apoptosis, it's called program. You cannot activate apoptosis as you wish. Just because you have the signaling molecules. It's not that easy. Autophagy, you can make it happen at will. That's the difference. For example, inducing by stress. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what happens during autophagy is there are many damaged organelles and components inside the cell. It's, it has undergone drought, high temperature, and so on. So these dysfunctional organelles will be broken down, okay, by the lytic vacuole. There is a special component in the cell. It's called oh, where, 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 right lytic vacuole. I'll show you in the next slide. So this is the mechanism. So when autophagy is triggered, these um, non-functional organelles or broken misfolded proteins will start to go to the vacuole. And this vacuole is actually lytic vacuole, meaning that this vacuole is able to lytic lysis, break down or disintegrate the cellular components. So then it gets, it gets into the vacuole and suddenly the vacuole contains lots of stuff. There's so much trash in me. So now the, the vacuole can decide to either further disintegrate this and then vomit out or reassemble it so that the plant can make a new organelles. So there's a two decision to be made, right? Sometimes the problem is so severe, it is not worth for the plants to disintegrate and to build again. So the, in this moment, the cell will decide to disintegrate and abolish everything in the cells. When this happens, this is apoptosis. This can lead to apoptosis. Complete cell death. If the plants, the cell decide not to die, but to rebuild, it's using the mantra. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Okay? But of course, this is a decision which is not easy to be made, given that while the decision is, is, is happening, the plant is still being bombarded by the cells. Okay? So, so this autophagy, why, 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 why is it? Why, so why, why is it? Uh, why it needs to rebuild all the components? You see, the Protein, I take example of protein. Protein is very easy. The protein in the cell, in the 3D structure, it has got a special structure. This structure must be in the correct conformation. Otherwise, the protein cannot do its job. What is the example of protein that do a lot of jobs? Enzyme. Enzyme catalyzing lots of reactions, right? So this enzyme which is a protein, if it is misfolded or denatured due to environmental stresses, it cannot function. When it cannot function, what's the point of you roaming about in me? So that's when the lytic vacuole will call this protein, come here, give it a slap, disintegrate, and will decide, should I rebuild you? So this uh, mechanism is very crucial for the plant to ensure that there are no zombie molecules, organelles in the cell. In the terms of the survival, it is also important because, <clears throat> for example, let's see, the plants wants to stop the progression of harmful chemical 
that has been detected by the leaf. Let's say you have a leaf and suddenly you spill a poisonous liquid to the leaf. And this poisonous liquid can actually travel throughout the plant, right? So now the plants, they will trigger the autophagy. And in this case, these, they will actually proceed to killing of the cells, leading to a condition called, it can be necrosis or uh, chlorosis. You, you, you saw this word before, right? Tissue death. Why? Why? Why kill yourself? If it doesn't kill itself, the poisonous chemical will travel along the vascular system and then killing the whole plant. So it's pretty much like you are diabetic and you are gangrene. You're having gangrene in your leg. You know, your, your, your ama has been enjoying kuih bakul, kuih bulan, her whole life. Her diabetic is beyond help now. The sugar reading is like 36. And her food has started to be gangrenated. Black. Usually what will happen? What will the doctor do? Put Nivea lotion on it? To make it whiter again? <laughs> what will happen? Amputation. So why is it? Why must be amputated the poor Amma leg? is to prevent the death of the cell or the problem to go up and actually kill her for good. So that's the concept of chlorosis and necrosis, which is at the beginning autophagy triggered. Okay, so stress is not all about mitigating the problem. It is about making a decision. Is it to repair or is it to be done with it? Person there is a bigger picture that, that the plus needs to worry about, right? Okay, why suddenly people look scared? All right, okay, All right, okay, so this is uh, towards the end of it. Um, so you see, there are many things that the plants need to worry about. So many decisions. Now it's all about the plant needs to recover. I mean, deal with it because I've got enough resources, I can rebuild new proteins. Or can I just commit it to memory? So this is a concept of balancing the act during recovery after the stress. So the plus has experienced the stress. Now it has to decide, should they commit this to the memory or not? Remember the conifer in winter story? So for this to happen, a threshold needs to be met first. Critical amount of it, of the stress uh, factors. So actually it happens with the repeated stress or dynamic growth condition. Happy time, drought, happy time, drought, happy time, drought. The plants pick up the signals and it will commit to memory. Okay. If it doesn't commit to memory, it, it can forget. Some people can forget. Like you. They are not going to survive. This is about the survival of the fittest. Not fetus, the baby, fetus. Did you learn that in your breeding? Survival of the fetus. No? Did you learn evolution? Evolution during dinosaur time, like 65 million years ago, suddenly there is a big comet, lost comet, flying, 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 bang, came to the earth. What happened? Or dinosaur dead, right? <laughs> Was everything dead? What didn't die? Crocodile. Crocodile. All this amoeba. They didn't die for some reason. That that turtle. Not ninja turtle. That uh, turtle and tortoise. Mostly rep reptiles. They didn't die. They somehow survive the stress in this in this in this uh, uh, example. What is the stress factor? The meteorite. That is the stress. Okay, so they manage to to go through the evolution after they have undergone the stressful event, and they, that has made them such a successful species. Survival of the fittest. 
survival of the fetus. So for the plants like this, those that cannot commit to memory, they are forgetful, they're not going to make it in the wild. So whatever that we, you have now are actually plants that functioning very well and they have actually committed to memory whatever problems that the parents have experienced before. The parents will tell to the kids, you know, well, it's not like the plants tell the kids before bedtime story. They, they, they have it in the form of chemicals, okay? So that's a, a different topic, but I'll just mention it here. It's called epigenetic. Epigenetic. The genome of the plants after several gen generations, they can be the same. You know the genome? The, the collection of the entire DNA sequence of the plant. They're going to be the same. But the things attached to the DNA, methyl, acetyl, components, these can change. These are epigenetic, meaning that things on the edges attached to the DNA. Okay? So this can tell the kids whether it's a good time or a bad time, okay? And bear in mind, stress doesn't happen only one thing at a time, no, no, no. It always happens in combinations. However, some stress has more prominent effects than others, okay? So like, um, yes, actually I put it here. So you can see that. So the one in the um, pink, that actually, kau nampak kadam? Ni pink, ni hijau. So the one in the pink got the potential negative impact. The one in the uh, green got the potential positive impact. So you can see that this matrix show you the combination of various abiotic factors. When they are combined together, are they beneficial or are they adverse effect, in negatively impactful to the plants? Okay, we take one example. For example, like this. Heat plus drought. Where is heat? Here. Drought. Potentially negative impact. Because, well, common sense. During drought time, is it happy? Then you got heat on top of that. Remember, okay, um, drought can actually happen in the icy region. Drought simply means there is no precipitation coming from the sky. Okay? Yeah. What about um, heat plus salinity? Heat. Oh, got no salinity here. Oh, got salinity here. Uh, potentially negative impact as well. Hmm. Then, let's see UV. UV with the ozone. Why suddenly it's green? Didn't, didn't you learn just now ozone is a bad thing? Yes, ozone is a bad thing. But ozone with the presence of UV, that's actually a good thing. Why? Yeah, it can create oxygen. It can help to convert molecular nitrogen into available nitrogen form. You see, nitrogen is a lot in the sky, in our atmosphere, about 70%, right? Plants cannot use that. But nitrogen and oxygen, they can combine to form nitrate. How? UV. UV can come, provide the energy, so that the reaction can take place between the oxygen and nitrogen. Now they become nitrate that the plants can use for their own use, right? Right, okay, so suddenly. Thank you so much, right? Okay, okay. Oh, the book is All right, all right, okay. I'll push it up a little bit. It's almost done, it's almost done, it's almost done. Okay. <clears throat> right, so this is about the stress memory. Um, so you can see that, look at the A here. Pre-stress, stress, recovery, post-stress, second stress. You can see that um, the amount of stress that happens needs to reach a critical point first before it can be committed to the memory. Okay? 
So that's why it's very important for, um, let's put it this way, stress is not only problem that you need to deal with. You can use stress to prime your plants, meaning that you want to create a stronger plants. Kind of like you're going to the gym. First time you go to the gym, how do you feel? Don't tell me you feel happy. You're going to feel very sore in your body. Sore and aching. Why? You're not used to it. Yeah. You, 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 basically, call them big. <laughs> That's why. That's why. So your muscle is undergoing a lot of damage and tearing. Okay. Yeah. Shocking. My, 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 uh, my owner, the owner of this body, got money for, to join the membership. Uh, right. Why? So, with the repeated amount of stress in the right amount, you can actually create a stronger plant. There is no GMO. There is no um, hybridization occurring. Just simply by priming the plant. This is the concept of priming. You induce the plant with a known amount of stresses. It can be heat, it can be water, it can be wind, it can be anything. Right. So in the level of the cell, these are the things that we can happen. Okay. So if you have given, the question now is, have you given the right amount or inadequate amount to create a stronger plant? If it is not enough, the plants will reset and become original again. That means you need to increase the, the level of the stresses so that it can commit to the memory. However, the plant perceive the stress factors, that's up to the species. Some species dealing with the histone. This is histone, okay? Your, your chromatin, they are wrapped around in a very condensed manner. This wrapping is actually facilitated by a special protein, the, the ball here. It's called a histone protein. Histone, okay? So they can do the modification of the histone and they can put this thing, methylation or modification. And this is what is meant by the epigenetic here. The sequence of DNA, the string here, the string that you see here is the DNA sequence. That stays the same. But whatever happens to the histone and also you can see the Christmas light attached to it will determine what will happen to the gene and also for the coming generation. Okay? All right. And then you, you get your um, abscessic acid um, signaling. You get also the MPQ. MPQ is the non-photochemical quenching. That is specific for photosynthesis. Okay. And then you got the FLC. FLC is the flowering gene. Flowering locus C gene. So this is specially for vernalization. Vernalization is the cold treatment given to some crops in order to induce flowering. For example, tulips, wheat, onions. Without winter, this FLC, nothing will happen to it. So the plant is not going to flower, but when the next season comes, it will keep on producing leaf, no flower, right? And finally, another thing is the stress. This is actually the um, RNA transcript. And what's this? Pac-Man. This is actually uh, the process of RNA decay. RNA decay. RNA decay. So the plants, when something happens to it, certain genes will be expressed. If the expression of the gene is ample enough, abundance enough, to the point this Pac-Man cannot deal, it will commit to memory. Okay? So... It's pretty much like when you're learning something, you need to repeat. One time is not enough, two times is not enough. After you have done multiple time enough, it will commit to the long-term memory, right? Okay. 
So this is a summary of it. Um, pretty much I have mentioned uh, before about this. Um, so the plants need to decide upon the contact with the stress, does it need to just recover and don't do anything about it or it needs to invest. When the plant invests to have a good memory, usually it will not look good. It will grow, it will grow, but it doesn't look good. It looks brown, it looks small, retarded, but do not look down on this plant. In the body of the plant, a lot of memory has been committed in the form of many forms. It can be this epigenetic, it can be in the form of accumulation of ABA compounds, so many things, okay? And then the plants need to decide um, because this depends on the location, seasons, and also the type of the soil, okay? Right, and that's the summary. I think you can read this, right? Yeah, yeah, because, oh, okay, you're not thinking about movie. Yay, you want, to, you want to show the movie? It's not a long movie, just a short movie. Both of these, like five minutes only. Wait. So, so we got two movies here. Um, the first one is about the plant sounds, and the second one is about the uh, time lapse using the infrared technique. One second, one second, one second. Can you shut the light? So this is this is actually the uh, thorough research, okay, from Tel Aviv University in Israel. I don't say go to Israel, just learn what they do. We arrived to this research from an open evolutionary question. Because plants develop to bed, potentially, from emitting sounds and from responding to sounds. The plants are surrounded by many organisms that can respond to sounds, yet plants were considered entirely mute. And we came to test this question. So if plants were emitting sounds at the hearing range, we would have known that. So we tested the sounds emitted by plants in the ultrasonic range. And we found that indeed, plants emit sounds, and these sounds contain information. In this study, we've shown that plants emit ultrasonic sound signals, signals that are above the human audible range. In order to record such signals, one needs special microphones, microphones that are sensitive to ultrasound. We're recording sounds emitted by tomato plants, but these sounds are ultrasonic sounds, so we humans can't hear them. In order to, to show what these sounds are like, we took many sounds, we put them together in a small time frame, and we changed the frequency so human ears can, can hear them. This is an example of such a manipulation we did on tomato sounds that we recorded. And these are sounds that were recorded from grapevines and manipulated in, in the same manner. So, one of our subjects was tomato plant. When a tomato plant is uh, feeling well, it emits very few sounds. But when it is stressed, when it is dehydrated or cut or sick, it emits plenty of sounds. And we can uh, tell the type of stress and the species of the plant from these sounds. This result has several implications. First, it means that in many cases, plants that uh, we see outside that appear stressed are also emitting sounds, only we do not hear them. Second, it might mean that someone is listening to these sounds. The sounds are out there and contain information, and both animals that can hear these sounds can respond to them. And possibly uh, we are testing whether plant. Okay, blame UPM. 
<laughs> Why? I think it's the internet, you see. Hey, turn on that. It should, it should be open. You know, UPM internet problem has been like forever. That's not even loading. Let me change it. Uh, we open it. No, that's too slow. Why is it not? Wait. You connect that, connecting. Connected, secured. Okay, that's fast enough. You can respond to the spot to them and possibly. Uh, we are testing whether plants can respond to the sounds of stressed plants. Finally, there is also a potential for an agricultural uh, advantage. It might be an additional way to monitor plant and particular plant stress without touching the plant. Okay, so that was the first video, and uh, we go to the second one. This, 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 this is a lot shorter, so... See, see... Okay, can you turn back the light on? So, let's look at that. Let's look at Okay, so you have watched two videos. What, what happened? So, for the first video, it tells you that, um, you know, with the, with the progression of technology, with the advent of more sophisticated methods in, in science, we can actually analyze or evaluate the plant health status with the equipment that we didn't use before. Okay? Because who would have thought actually sounds might actually coming from the plant itself. However, we cannot hear it. Let's face it. Our retina and our auditory cells in your ears are limited. The retina in your eyes can only perceive light from the range of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. That's all. That's pretty much the rainbow color. Wherever outside of this spectrum, X-ray, gamma ray, cosmic ray, ray of hope, you cannot see. It, that's also for your auditory hearing, the cells. There are cells in here responsible for hearing. And for human, I think the frequency, the hertz that we can listen to is about 50 hertz to, to 20,000 hertz. 
anything beyond this that's why this guy called ultrasonic more than 20,000 hertz we cannot hear it it's present the cosmic ray is it present or not can you see cosmic ray no it's that's that's what happened to the sound so these sounds are actually surrounding us from the nature the plants are communicating the the insects are communicating but you can't listen to them so we use this new acquired knowledge to use assisted uh, equipment to interpret the sounds so maybe this is something that you can incorporate into your study as well use this special microphone and then understand the happy plants this is the signature sound of the all the profile sounds plants that have high nitrogen this is the sound if you do that you'll be the first in the world to do that right okay <clears throat> in fact um, i think about i think it was last month it, it hasn't it hasn't been published but it has in the preprint so my team we, we have uh, published uh uh, a short uh, publication, a paper about the sound, how it can it have impact on the rice. Okay, if you want to, uh, you remember the, the, the title of the paper? I forgot. You can read later. I'll just give you the, the sound. I think sound with my paper, but I forgot it. Hey, I'm aging. I'm allowed to to uh, forget stuff. Sound wave. Poor. Rice. <laughs> uh, oh, Petanica. Yeah, yeah. A UPM journal. Petanica. Ha, this one. Yay. So, um, you might want, you, you can read more about this. So, this is, this is, this is, uh, well, we did this experiment uh, about five years ago with some undergrad. So, you can read here the specific sound wave that we give to the rice plant that actually have impact on the stomatal. Who would have thought specific hertz and decibel can change the stomatal morphology of the rice plant? So that's that's very cool. Okay, so you can read more about it. Yeah, you might see that I am the corresponding of this paper, but don't email me. Nobody will entertain you. Yeah. All right, okay, and for the second um, um, video, what was the take home message? It's, it's all about take home message, actually. What well, about it? First, you can use thermal camera to understand the, your, your, your plant's activity within the, the light range that you cannot see. Infrared is light range, light spectrum beyond 700. 20 nanometers you cannot see but it's there touch your neighbor what do you feel sad if you feel the warmth you feel you feel you feel your neighbor is warm right that actually a form of light heat is a form of light light that you cannot see right what's the proof uh heat is light you take a kettle you boil the water in the kettle, step back, right into the kettle, you can see that the view is distorted. That's actually light of the heat coming. But, but your, your retina cannot, cannot breathe. What color, is the, what color is this? Should I put blue? No, it's not blue. Red? Oh, that's already there. Right? Okay, so you can see here, you can see here that the plant that undergo the drought and but plus treatment is actually more active the plant that undergo the drought completely meaning that the plants is you know undergoing the drought the plants stay static pretty much they're not moving about you know violent rate and stuff right okay i think oh wrong computer okay i think that's the boring and uh, yeah so that's just to conclude stuff so whatever it is, the plants have things to worry about. They need to worry about how they are going to grow, how they are going to develop, how they are going to reproduce, 
how they are going to ensure correct nutrient ion balance and also the energy production because plant can photosynthesize. Do you need to worry about photosynthesis? You need to worry, can you photosynthesize? Oh. <laughs> okay, and they need to worry about all of this while paying attention to the abiotic stresses. Are these worth to deal with or should I commit this to, to memory so that new structure or new compound should be made to defend myself, right? Okay, so that's all, yay. Okay, any question? All good? Okay, one quiz? <sighs> all right, okay, any question at all? You know you can ask me for Earth to Heaven? Postgrad, you should be happy question. You, you, I mean, like, are you glad? Well, that's a bit forgive it for, for, forgivable. That's still blur, like, all good? No question? All right. Okay, I think that's all. Um, we'll give this slide later to your um, lecturer. And I think we can have the video as well, just in case she wants to make a, your exam coming out from this or, or so. All right? Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going all right, okay, so I think that's all for today. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, say again. Autophagy. 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 <coughs> when it is triggered, that, okay, let's put it this way. Autophagy, it is happening in every single cell to some degree, not all, but most of the cells, especially cells that are the closest to the stress factors. So you have a canopy of plant. It could be that your stress coming from one side, from the north. So that is the closest to the stress um, element. So autophagy naturally will come to happen in this region, the strongest first. And if the uh, stress factors persistence continuing, getting stronger and more intense, the autophagy will start to happen to the whole body of the plant. You, you can have autophagy as well. Actually, autophagy is good for you. You just have your fasting for a month, right? The whole time you are fasting, your body turning on the mode of autophagy. Your cells are devouring itself breaking and disintegrating all this misfolded protein during 11 months of you eating non-stop like PIG. You have been eating non-stop. There are so much rubbish in your cells. Yeah, it's a surprise you're still living. That's why the, 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 the autophagy said to you. So when you are not eating, the cells can do this autophagy because they can deal with it now. When you're eating, they are busy, what, digesting and then deal with all the oxygen and stuff. When you are fasting, decision can be made. Actions can be taken. So after one month, how do you feel? Do you feel sicker? You will, you will find that people will tell after a month, you actually feel healthier. The reason is for a month, your body has been doing the autophagy. So for, but one thing, the autophagy in human will only start after four, 12 to 14 hours of not eating. Don't eat. If you eat, autophagy will stop. You need to stop eating. Sugar stops autophagy. That's the culprit, number one. If you drink water, water is still fine. Water, you know, green tea, not green tea with sugar, molasses, no. Um, pure green tea. So you do that, um, many medical uh, scientific um, evidence has shown that actually good, so good, it can cure some cancer progression. 
Because autophagy, it de devouring itself, right? The cancer cells have, is being eaten by this autophagy mechanism. But when they start to eat bad, stop. Right? Okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, any more questions? All good? All good? Okay. Okay. All good. All right. Okay. So I'll see you. Um, one more thing. For, for my class, um, you need to do one activity involving hormone, the flowering hormone. However, that takes a bit long to accomplish, meaning that you need to put the treatment first. We learn about the hormone soon, but you need to put the treatment first because you will only see the effects after three or four weeks. Is there any time this week that you can come in the evening to prep the farm? The farm is not far, it's just, you know, near the dean's office. Oh, no, organic unit. How about this Thursday evening? Yeah. The, the quicker, the, the, the better we start. We just need to prep. We have the plus, you need to do some weeding. Um, tomorrow, okay. Thursday. <laughs> my my happiness just flew off me. Let's let's make it. Uh, okay, some of you, if you can come on Thursday, we, we make it two days, okay? Because um, the plot is rather big. We need to do the weeding. So come tomorrow. Uh, the location will be given to you. Maybe around five something five. Come around around five, okay? Come come around five to the farm. Don't wear baju raya. Nobody is doing open house. This this is farm work. You can bring bak bunga api and stuff. That's fine. So we'll do that for two days on th uh, Thursday tomorrow and also on Friday. If we are done on Thursday, then that's good. You don't have to come on, on Friday. All right? Is that clear? Tanya, aku dah kena repeat berkali-kali. Ah, lupa, 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 lupa. Okay, good, good. Okay, what happen if you don't come? Tidak. Oh, tidak, mas. Somebody dosa already negative with me. Okay, all right. Good. Too bad, too bad. All right, okay. I'll see you, see you. Bye. All right.